Howdy everyone, I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin and I share all of my university educational content to provide my students with evergreen content that outlasts the semester and to support any working professionals, anyone in society who wants to learn about data science. Okay, so as part of my educational content, I have many, I think it's 50 right now, interactive Python dashboards to tackle specific concepts within data science. And so I've been recording these walkthroughs of these interactive dashboards as part of a new series on YouTube. So let's go ahead. Today we're going to jump into Monte Carlo simulation. Now, if you want to follow along, you can follow along with the code, with this workflow. You go to my GitHub account, Python Numerical Demos is my repository there. You go down here, you're going to find all my interactive dashboards. The one we'll be covering today is going to be specifically on Monte Carlo simulation. So that is right there, Monte Carlo simulation. Now I have it loaded up right here. You'll be able to run it as long as you have Anaconda, the most recent version installed. It should work fine for you. I'll keep them up to date. All right, let's dive into Monte Carlo simulation. What we can do with Monte Carlo simulation is we can build on certain modeling workflows. And so this is really powerful. In fact, what we can do is incorporate, integrate multiple uncertainty sources, basically do math with distributions. And that's extremely powerful. But also we can use Monte Carlo simulation to build more advanced data science workflows like Bootstrap used in machine learning bagging or Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation, which is required for a lot of Bayesian approaches where we sample the posture and there's many, many other applications for MCMC. Okay. Now, the purpose of this walkthrough is not to jump into the details. No, no, no. We're not going to get into a lot of depth here. Uh, so if you want greater depth, go ahead and check out my full lecture on Monte Carlo simulation. I also have additional um, lectures which get into things like Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation. I have lectures on bootstrap. So if you're interested to dive into more details, I do have that available. Let's go ahead and just give you some basics right now, just so we're able to work together on the dashboard. The definition of Monte Carlo simulation, the very basic operation is random sampling from a distribution. So let me show you the procedure and then I'll show you a dashboard afterwards. Model the representative distribution. Okay, so the CDF is defined as f of x, x. So in other words, for any value of x, we can get the cumulative probability. And so it's a cumulative distribution function. Now what we do is we can draw a random value uniformly distributed 0, 1, this is a cumulative probability value. We could also call it a p-value. And you go ahead and you apply the inverse to the CDF to calculate the associated realization. So the inverse of that CDF, notice the inverse, using that p-value, that L indicating a random index of that. And we do that and we can draw a value. So that's it. We're just going to draw around random values. I could go grab my cowboy hat off my shelf there. And we could go ahead and just put a bunch of uh, labeled piece of paper in there. And I just draw randomly from the cowboy hat. That's the same thing. We're just random sampling from a distribution. Now, how do we use this for uncertainty modeling? Well, if all I was to do today was just draw random values from a distribution, I think a lot of people would stop watching right now. That's not very interesting. Because after many realizations, we just get back the original distribution. That's not very impressive math with distributions. But it allows us to go further and do math where we have many different random variables and we're doing different types of mathematical operations. Okay, so let me give you some definitions. Random variable. It's a feature's value at a time or location is unknown. It can take on a range of possible values. We denote it as capital variable, so x1, feature 1, usually defined by PDF, lowercase f of x1, x1. That, that's going to be the PDF, that, that distribution that shows us the relationship between density and the data values or likelihood in the data values. And CDF, as I mentioned before, which is a plot of cumulative probability versus the data values. Either or, they're showing you the 
distribution, the range of possible values and their relative likelihoods. The data value, well, we could have actual sample observations at specific locations and times. So we, we may actually have some data available to us. And I want to just show you that that's denoted by lowercase x1 or x2 or whatever the feature is. And a realization, a random sample drawn from a random variable, capital X was the random variable, lowercase x will be a realization. And as you know, this could be for a specific feature alpha. It could also be at a location, we could use the location notation we used right here too. So it's fine. With Monte Carlo simulation, we can solve problems like this. We can take multiple random variables, x1, x2, x3, and we can perform math with them and calculate the output. So you can see how this would be very powerful for figuring out a uncertainty model, say in Y, given the addition of all these random variables, or it could be any type of math. We could take products, division, whatever we want to do. And we can do this where these random variables are any distribution. They could be parametric, Gaussian, uniform, triangular, whatever, gamma, it doesn't matter. And, or they could be empirical. And this is in geostats, they'll call that a reference distribution, where you just have a set of values and you sample from the values. Monte Carlo simulation for uncertainty modeling, uh, general workflow. So here, let me just define the general workflow now. You model all the distributions for all the inputs, uh, the features, the variables of interest, f of x1 through f of x m. There's going to be m separate CDFs representing m separate inputs or features that we're going to work with. Um, we call them predictor features in machine learning. Then you go ahead and you draw for each realization, you're going to draw random cumulative probability p-values for each one of those features. So that would be L index. And then you apply the inverse of all of those distributions to get realizations from that. So we're sampling randomly from the 1 through M separate random variables. Then we go ahead and we apply those set of realizations, L realizations, to a transfer function to calculate an output realization. So YL, a realization of the output, is going to be equal to some function of all of those inputs. Now this is extremely powerful. We can apply Monte Carlo simulation in many different situations. We can have, you know, easily simulate uncertainty models for complicated systems. We just have to draw random values from specific uncertainty distributions for each feature. And we go ahead and we apply all of those drawings to the transfer function. And in generality, we can calculate that uncertainty distribution. Okay, so it's a very empirical approach to sample to get an uncertain model. Now, when, we, when I present this in class, a lot of students ask, well, how many realizations do I need? And don't worry, it's simple. Enough. That's the answer. You just need enough. And let's just imagine that if your MCS computational cost, the drawing of random values and applying the transfer function, say adding, dividing, or whatever math we're doing with those realizations is very low cost. Computational cost is low. Just do many. Do, do a million. Do 10,000. Fully sample and see what the distribution is. Now, if you have too few realizations, you don't see the output distribution that you're sampling. And so that becomes a problem. You're not able to understand or explore that distribution. So what are we going to do? Don't do too few. If you run like 10 realizations, there's no way you can understand the P10, the P90. You can't calculate reliable statistics. See the law of small numbers. Okay, let's take a simulation perspective on this, and then we're going to go right into the dashboards, I promise. There are many uncertainty operations that we could work out analytically. I don't want to say we need MCS for everything. Let me give you an example, random variable plus a constant. That's very, very straightforward. In fact, that's just taking a distribution, shifting it. Um, we can work that out through expectation math. We can show that the expected value of this is just the expected value of the random variable plus the constant. We could do a product of a constant times a distribution. In general, that's just going to stretch or squeeze the distribution, and we can generally work this out. If we have the addition of two random variables, and both of them are Gaussian distributed, we can actually work out the by expectation 
the expected value of the addition, the sum. But there's many problems we can't. How about the product between x1 and x2, given x1 and x2 random variables can be any distribution. In all generality, we can't solve that. There's many cases where we don't know the analytical solution for the products. Or they may be very complicated to work with. We just want to sample it. Okay, how about this? Can you figure out the probability of winning at the game of solitaire given a specific strategy you have in solitaire? I don't know if you're like me, but when I play solitaire, I just try to make those piles as fast as possible. I don't really have much of a strategy. It's kind of a greedy approach. How well am I going to do against somebody who's a little more you know, strategic with their decision making? The whole idea of MCS is to simulate the system. And then you sample the outcomes. In other words, if you have a complicated thing, you let the computer run a realization, get an outcome. You let the computer run a realization, get the outcome. And you look at the distribution of the samples of the outcomes after the transfer function. And in the case of solitaire, you'd never build an analytical solution for that. There's correlations within the cards you draw based on what cards are already been used. Like imagine that, that get, that's changing all the time. In fact, the combinatorial space of solitaire is so vast that in general, congratulations, every time you play solitaire, you're probably the first person to ever have seen that game. Isn't that really cool? That's okay. That was kind of cool. All right, limitations, MCS methods, they assume representativity. The distributions, we're going to assume the f of x's are representative. So if there's bias, there's too few samples and so forth, yes, yes, you, you need to have representative, enough samples to observe. Independence, the random variables are independent from each other. We're going to draw from x1, x2, x3 independently. Now, there are methods to um, impart correlation. That's not something we're going to cover right now. And stationarity. The realizations from each variable or each feature, they have the same distribution over time or space. They're not changing over time or space. Let's go ahead and get started. You have everything you need. As long as you have the most modern anaconda, this should just run. We're going to go ahead and run the following code and load some packages we'll need. They're basic anaconda packages, so if you have anaconda installed, you should be fine. I have a little function here. Just add a grid. Let's build a simple... Monte Carlo simulation workflow. Now, I'm not going to explain this dashboard. I'm not going to explain all the code. That's not the purpose of this. I'm just going to adjust the screen and make this fit. Okay, so what we've done here is I've demonstrated the very basics of Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, what do we have? We have an, a distribution, x1, which is Gaussian, a minimum and a maximum value shown right there. Now, to anybody looking at this and saying, wait, Dr. Perch, the parameters of Gaussian distribution are mean and standard deviation, never fear. I assume three standard deviations, plus or minus around the mean, and then I just backed out from the min and the max, what should be the mean and the standard deviation. So it's, you know, I made it symmetric, three standard deviations, both sides. So it's very straightforward. And um, I did that so that I could change the distribution to be uniform and triangular and so forth. So I did that on purpose. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna demonstrate Monte Carlo assimilation for one realization. Okay, so L, is equal to one. I drew a random value. That random value is about um, 0.77, 76, or something like that. I did the inverse of the x1 distribution, which was Gaussian with a mean of, well, let's see, 50, because if I go in the middle between my min max and a standard deviation, let's see, about 50 minus 10, that's 40. 40 divided by 3 is the standard deviation. Okay, not, not too bad. So we go ahead and we draw this random value, cumulative probability value, about 0.76. We do the inverse on that distribution, given the mean of 50 and 16 point something standard deviation, Gaussian distribution, and the result here is 59. That's my first Monte Carlo simulation. That's it. We've done Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, but the power in it is we repeat it over and over again. So let's go ahead and we're going to do L equals 2. Ta-da! We got two. Now, remember what I said, the whole point of Monte Carlo simulation is to sample and observe the samples, to basically take a look at what's coming out and to pool that, to summarize that. Okay, so we had a first sample here, uh, 59. The second one is 40. You can see we've got a cumulative probability value of about 0.2324 or something like that. We got 40. L equals 3. Okay, right there. And you can see over multiple realizations, 
We keep drawing, keep drawing. You can see what's happening here. I make the points turn yellow after they've been drawn. So you can see the next sample. I make the little incremental addition to the histogram red. So you can see the red box. And you can see I make the most recent draw red. And I make all the ones start to fade over time. I got really creative with this. I have to admit, I had a little fun. Okay, so we go ahead and we keep sampling, keep sampling. And so this is Monte Carlo simulation for L equals 17 realizations, 18, 19, 20. And we keep going and keep going. What's going to happen if we get enough realizations? Eventually, we're going to get back the original distribution. I hope you can see that this is starting to look like a Gaussian distribution. It's not perfect. If I ran a thousand, a million, it would look great. I put a threshold of 40 on this because I did a lot of graphics. I just wanted to communicate this idea. But here's all my samples. Here's the histogram right there. And so I can observe and see immediately what is the outcome and I could summarize this. I could calculate the mean, the standard deviation, the p10, the p90 and so forth. That's the whole point of Monte Carlo simulation. Observe the outcomes. Okay so this was a very simple example but I said before if all we're going to do is draw from a single distribution that's trivial. That's not interesting. Now what I do is I have another dashboard. Let's go ahead and run that make sure it's working. There it is. And what I do here is this is the case of I want to take and take y is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. You see we're doing math with random variables. These are all distributions. This is a distribution. We want to figure out that distribution by Monte Carlo simulation. Or we could do this where we take the products, addition or products, and now we're going to define x1, x2, x3 as specific distributions. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at that. L equals 1. Min, max, min, max, min, max. Just what I did before with Gaussian distributions. And the means are going to be what? They're going to be um, 20, 20, 20. You know, you can work that out. Okay, so let's go ahead. We do one sample. I got a random sample here. Independent sample of X2. Independent sample of X3 shown right here. And then if I go ahead and do the math of X1 plus X2 plus X3, I get this realization here. That's one Monte Carlo simulation given my transfer function, which was X1 plus X2 plus X3. Okay, now what I'm doing now, that's not fun. To do Monte Carlo simulation, you really need to do many, many realizations. So we're going to two, three, four, and I'm making multiple samples. You're going to see the Y axes are changing to keep everything on the plot. And as I do a bunch of bunch of realizations, take it up to 10,000, look what happened. I had values randomly sampled from x1, x2, x3. And when I added each one of the realizations to get a realization of y, when I look at the final result, it's, it's Gaussian. And so we knew that. We knew if we summed three Gaussian random variables together, we get a Gaussian outcome. And in fact, you could use expectation, statistical expectation, to calculate what should be the mean and the variance. The mean is going to be the expectation of y is going to be the expectation of x1 plus the expectation of x2 and so forth. And due to independence and additivity of variance, we could have figured out what the variance would have been too. So that's not as interesting. Now what about multiplication? What's going to be the shape of the distribution if we multiply them? So look at that. Check that out. Well, now we can see if we take a bunch of realizations of x1, x2, x3, and we have solved the problem of, hmm, I should have put this times that times that. So please just update that in your mind. I'll update that in the plot. And so what will happen there is we can see the resulting distribution hmm, looking a little more log normal. And of course, we get into the central limit theorem and talk about what happens when you take the summation of random variables, it goes Gaussian, the product of random variables, it goes log normal, um, when you have enough random variables. Okay, so we can see that right there. Now, of course, you could do this for all generality. What if you change this to uniformly distributed for x2 and x3, we make that triangular. You see, we could do any math with Monte Carlo simulation. We're not in any way constrained. We just have to draw from each one of them, apply them to the transfer function, observe the outcomes. Okay, I hope that this was useful to you, this demonstration of Monte Carlo simulation. Once again, I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin. And I share all of my educational content to support my students with evergreen content that will outlast the semester.
and also to assist working professionals interested to learn data science. All right, everyone, stay safe.